comforter, the spirit of truth, who are in all places and fill all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and dwell within us and cleanse us from every blemish and save our souls, O blessed one. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill among men. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill among men. O Lord, you shall open my lips and my mouth will show forth your praise. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, always, now, and ever, and forever. In peace let us pray to the Lord, for the peace that comes from heaven above, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. throughout the whole world for the welfare of the holy churches of God and for the union of them all let us pray to the Lord for this holy church and for those who enter it with faith devoutness and the fear of God let us pray to the Lord for our holy Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew, the Archbishop of Constantinople, let us pray to the Lord. For our God-loving Bishop Gregory, for our esteemed priesthood, for the diaconate in Christ, for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. government of our country and all civil authorities and for our armed forces let us pray to the Lord for this city and for every city village and country and for those who with faith dwell in them let us pray to the Lord for healthful seasons, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For those who travel by land, by sea, and by air, for the sick, the suffering, for those who are held in captivity, and for their safety and salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, and want, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Commemorating our ever holy, ever pure, ever blessed and glorious Lady, the birth giver of God and ever Virgin Mary, together with all the saints, let us commend ourselves in one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For to you are due all glory, honor, and adoration to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and ever and forever. Amen. His mind is beyond description. His glory surpasses all understanding. His mercy is all of it. His love for mankind is beyond expression. Mass of mankind is contained upon us in this holy church. We still upon ourselves and upon the church. Pray for that you want to curse his name and passion. O Lord, save your people and bless your heritage. Restore the fullness of your church. Sanctify those who are the beauty of your eyes. Glorify them by your divine light.
the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. from the second epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, God is the one who firmly establishes us along with you in Christ. It is he who appointed us and has sealed us, thereby depositing the first payment, the Spirit, in our hearts. I call on God as my witness that it was out of consideration for you that I did not come to Corinth again. Domineering over your faith is not my purpose. I prefer to work with you towards happiness. As regards faith, you are standing firm. I did decide, however, not to visit you again in painful circumstances. For if I cause you pain, who can make me happy again but the ones I grieve? I wrote as I did so that when I come, I may not be saddened by those who should rejoice my heart. I know you all well enough to be convinced that my happiness is yours. That is why I wrote you in great sorrow and anguish with copious tears, not to make you sad, but to help you realize the great love I bear for you. Is 
wisdom, let us be attentive as we listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be unto all. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Let us be attentive. The Lord spoke this parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a marriage feast for his son and sent his servants to call those who were invited to the marriage feast, but they would not come. Again he sent out other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, Behold, I have made ready my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the marriage feast. But they made light of it and went off, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. But when the king heard of it, he was angry, and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the thoroughfares and invite the marriage feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the streets and gathered, gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there was a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and cast him into the outer darkness. Their men will weep and gnash their teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Christ is among us. Thank you. <clears throat> is God fickle? Does God change his mind? Well, believe it or not, quite often. Then again, we are speaking of 6,000 years of history of mankind. So maybe not quite as often as one would think, but more often than one would think. We have a perfect example in the calling of the prophet Samuel, whom we commemorate today according to the church calendar. Here is the story of Samuel. It was about 1100 BC, and there lived a man named Elkanah and his wife Hannah. God had not blessed them with children, and Hannah's biological clock was ticking. She prayed diligently for God to send her a child. One day, the priest Eli saw her praying and said to her, Go in peace. May the God of Israel grant you your petition. Elkanah knew his wife Hannah, and God sent them a son, they named Samuel. The name Samuel means the name is godly. That's what the name Samuel means. The name is godly. The grateful parents dedicated the young boy to God as they promised they would. And Samuel was raised in the house of the priest Eli where he grew and matured in great honor before the Lord God. 
It was there in the house of the priest Eli that the Lord God called upon the young boy, Samuel. To best understand the significance of the calling of Samuel, it is helpful to know some background information. After God led Moses and the Israelites out of Egypt, the Lord God gave each of the sons of Jacob, who was renamed Israel, a section of land from, whom they would make, from which they would make their living. Each son, also called a tribe, got a section of land from which they would make their living. For each son got a section of land except the descendants of the son and the descendants of Levi. The Levites were, the chosen, were chosen to be the priests of the people and their job was to offer animal sacrifices to God in behalf of all of the other tribes. When the faithful brought their lamb to the priests, part of their offering was burnt in worship to God and the other part was shared with the priests. In this way, the families of the priests were sustained by the others because they were doing the important work of offering the sacrifice to God. Now, God laid out in detail how the priests were to perform the ritual. They would take the lamb offered by the family and they would cut it into pieces. And then they would put those pieces into a kettle to boil. Now the priests were instructed by the Lord to take a three-forked spear and to thrust it into the kettle. And whichever piece they sheared, that was the priest's portion of the, of, to sustain his family with. It was the Lord God said that the priest's son, learning from their father, would continue this ritualistic responsibilities. And it was done that way for generations. However, the sons of the pious priest Eli were scoundrels and could care less about the rituals and had no love for the Lord God in their hearts. They connived from those who gave the offerings and bribed them to keep the best portion for themselves. They did not want to take their chances of what they may pull out. So as Eli grew older, it was time for the sons to take his place. Yet the Lord God promised, but the sons of Eli were not worthy. So the Lord God said, far be it from me, for I will honor those who honor me, and the ones who despise me shall be dishonored. So the Lord God changed his mind about the priest's sons. Now one evening as everyone was sleeping, Samuel heard a voice calling, Samuel, Samuel. He ran to Eli, he says, here I am, you called me. Eli said, I did not call you, go back to sleep. After falling back to sleep, a voice once again, Samuel, Samuel. A second time, Samuel came running to Eli, here I am, you called me. I did not call you, go back to sleep. Third time, the voice, Samuel, Samuel. He came to Eli the third time, but this time Eli realized that it was the Lord God that was calling the young boy. So Eli said to Samuel, he says, return to you and go back to sleep. And if you hear the voice again, say, O Lord, speak for your servant hears. Sure enough, as he fell back to sleep, the Lord spoke again and told Samuel that he would rise against the sons of Eli for the evils they had committed. He also said to Samuel that you, Samuel, would be the one that is chosen to be the spokesman of God. Samuel grew in maturity and all the lands of Israel believed him to be a great prophet of the Lord. Samuel is probably best known for the prophet who consecrated Saul as the first king of Israel when the Israelites wanted a king. 
Then after Saul disobeyed the instructions of the Lord, the Lord God changed his mind again in order that Samuel consecrate David, the young shepherd boy, to take Saul's place, honoring those who honor him and dishonoring those who dishonor him. The priesthood of the old covenant has ended with the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and a new priesthood begins. St. Peter in his first letter says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. He is speaking about all of us. We no longer offer animal sacrifices, but a spiritual sacrifice, as we say in the divine liturgy. We pray a merciful peace, a sacrifice of praise. And God calls each and every one of us, just as he called that young boy Samuel. Will we hear him? Will we listen to his voice? So what have we learned from the story of the prophet Samuel? So often we think that God has turned his back on us because things are going wrong. Not so. It is we who have turned our back on him and tried to deceive him. And we wonder why our lives are in such shambles. One may say that God does indeed change his mind, but does God really change his mind about us or, does, or is it we who change our mind about him? Certainly it is the latter. Remember always that God blesses those who bless him and curses those who curse him. Unless we honor and worship him, he will not honor and bless us. So it's that simple. So let us learn from the example of the prophet Samuel. Let us listen to the Lord calling us. He calls us all the time. And let us not ignore his calling. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen, Christ is among us. Let us all say with our whole soul and with all our mind, let us say. O oh Lord, almighty God of our fathers, we pray to you, hear us and have mercy. mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy, we pray to you. Hear us and have mercy. Furthermore, we pray for our holy ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew, the Archbishop of Constantinople, and for our God-loving Bishop Gregory, for our spiritual fathers and all other clergy, and for all our brethren in Christ, for their welfare, peace, health, salvation, and for the remission of their sins, and that the Lord our God may prompt and help them in all things. for those who give their offerings and do good works in this holy and venerable church, for those who labor in its service, for those who sing, and for all the people here present who await your great and abundant mercy, for those who have shown us kindness, and for all Orthodox Christians. Merciful God who loves mankind and we give glory to you, to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, always, now, and ever, and forever. The King of glory, who is worthy to come to you, to join us to your former service for you, when he is bound 
down by desires and pleasures of naked flesh, but to serve you something grand and inspiring, even for the heavenly powers themselves. And yet, because your ineffable and bondless love for mankind, our nature unchanged and unchangeable, and became both a man and our high priest, and his master of all, conferred upon us the sacred power of offerings of the torchful, bloodless sacrifice. For you alone, O Lord our God, rule over all things in heaven and on earth, and are born of the throne of the cherubim, O Lord of the seraphim, and the king of Israel. You alone, O holy and abiding saints, stir pray to you, gracious and ready to hear me. Look favorably upon your sinful and unworthy servant, and cleanse my soul from all thought of evil. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, enable me, who have been by the grace of the priesthood, to stand before your holy altar and offer the sacrifice of your most pure body and precious blood. I come to you with my head bowed low and implore you to turn out your face away from me, and exclude me from among your children, and allow these gifts to be offered to you by me, your sinful and unworthy servant. It was you, O Christ, who offered and are offered, and received and are received, and we give glory to you and to your eternal Father and your life giving spirit, and our endeavor unto the age of the ages. represent the cherubim and sing to the life-giving trinity that thrice holy him let us not lay aside our earthly cares that we may raise on high the king of all who comes invisibly escorted by angelic hosts alleluia 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 we who mystically represent the cherubim and sing to the life-giving trinity that thrice holy him let us not lay aside our earthly cares that we may raise on high the king of all who comes invisibly escorted by angelic hosts alleluia 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 we who mystically represent the cherubim and sing to the life-giving trinity the thrice holy him let us not lay aside our earthly cares that we may raise on high the king of all who comes invisibly escorted by angelic hosts alleluia 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 god be merciful to me a sinner
country and its armed forces, the blessed and ever remembered founders and benefactors of this holy church, for the servants of God, those who are celebrating their birthdays this week, Bill Dudak, Protodeacon Gregory Bank and Ron Tinkle, for the handmaiden of God, Erin Demich, who is in need of our prayers for her health and speedy recovery, for the servants of God, those who are joining us via the internet for their health and long life, for the departed servants of God, Bernard Butchak, Anna Pringle, Mary Ann Newick Fetterman, Elida McCushock, the departed members of the Cathedral Altar Society, Eileen Marie Soroka, and Mark Andrew Keselak, and the newly departed Servant of God, John E. Homiak, for their blessed repose, and all you Orthodox Christians, always, now, and ever, and forever. Please join in the praying of the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary and was made man. He was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate and suffered and was buried. And the third day he arose again according to the scriptures. And he ascended into heaven and he sits at the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who spoke through the prophets. In one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I profess one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us stand aright, let us stand with fear, let us be attentive, so that we may offer the holy sacrifice in peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you.
bestowed upon us. We thank you also for this liturgy which you are found worthy to receive from our hands, even though there stand before you thousands of archangels, tens of thousands of angels, cherubim and seraphim, six-winged and many eyed who soar law from their wings and who sing a cry out and proclaim the triumphant hymn, saying Blessed powers, O Lord, and lover of mankind, we too cry out and say, Holy are you and all holy, you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. Holy are you and all holy, and sublime is your glory. You loved your world so much that you gave your only begotten Son, that everyone who believes in him should not perish but should have everlasting life. And after he had come and fulfilled everything in the divine plan for our redemption, on the night of which he was betrayed, or rather on the night of which he gave himself up for the life of the world, he took bread into his holy, all pure, and immaculate hands, and having given thanks, blessed, sanctified, and broken, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Especially for our ever holy, ever pure, ever blessed and glorious Lady, the birth giver of God and ever Virgin Mary.
Remember among the first, O Lord, our holy ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew, the Archbishop of Constantinople, and our God-loving Bishop Gregory. Preserve them for your holy churches in peace, in safety, in honor, and in health for many years, so that they may faithfully dispense the word of your truth. grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise your most honorable and sublime name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit now and ever and forever. commemorated all the saints again and again in peace let us pray to the Lord for the precious gifts which have been offered and sanctified let us pray to the Lord that our God who loves mankind having received them on his holy most heavenly and mystical altar as an aroma of spiritual fragrance may bestow upon us in return the divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray for our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, and want. Let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us O oh God, by your grace, oh, were they that in all things will be perfect, holy, peaceful, and without sin, let us beseech the Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us beseech the Lord. of our sins and transgressions, let us beseech the Lord. For all that is good and profitable to our souls and for the peace of the world, let us beseech the Lord. That we pass the remainder of our life in peace and repentance, let us beseech the Lord. For a Christian ending of our life without pain and shame, peaceful and for a good account of the fearful judgment seat of Christ, let us beseech the Lord. Having prayed for the unity of faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. And make us worthy, O Lord, with full confidence and without condemnation to dare to call upon you, God, our Heavenly Father, and to say to you, Please join in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Okay. 
healer of our souls and bodies. Through the grace and bounties and love towards mankind of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy, gracious and life-giving Spirit, now and ever and forever. merciful to me, a sinner. O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Be attentive, uh, holy things are for the holy. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe, O oh Lord, and confess that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sins, of whom I am the first. O oh Son of God, accept me today as a communicant of your mystical supper, for I will not speak of this mystery to your enemies, nor like Judas will I give you a kiss. But like the penitent thief, I confess to you, O Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. O Master, remember me when you come into your kingdom. O Holy One, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Let the partaking of your holy mysteries, O Lord, be not for my judgment nor condemnation, but for the healing of my soul and my body. O Lord, I also believe and confess that this which I am about to receive is truly your most precious body and truly your life-giving blood, which I pray I may worthily receive for the remission of all of my sins and for life everlasting. O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. O God, cleanse me of my sins and have mercy on me. O Lord, forgive me, for my sins are many. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Forgive me if I have sinned against you in any way, deed, or thought, whether voluntary or involuntary. Forgive me if I have sinned against you in any way, deed, or thought, whether voluntary or involuntary. The precious and all holy love of your body, O Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, is given to me, O Lord, and the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord,
has touched your left and shall take away your iniquities and shall cleanse you from all your sins. <clears throat> o God, save your people and bless your inheritance. Having received the divine, holy, most pure, immortal, heavenly, and life-creating awesome mysteries of Christ, arise, let us worthily give thanks to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Having prayed that this day will be perfect, holy, peaceful, and without sin, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For you are our sanctification, and to you we give glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Let us depart in peace. In the name of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, blessing those who bless you and sanctifying those who put their trust in you. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Preserve the fullness of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them by your divine might and forsake us not to put our hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to your priests, to the honorable government of our country, to its armed forces, and to all your people. For every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from you, the Father of lights, you we give glory and thanksgiving and worship to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, always, now, and ever, and forever.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is among us. Have a seat a moment. We have a lot of announcements today. Our annual trivia night is scheduled for October 6th. 6th. All information is available at the trivia night table in the church basement. Please take flyers and hang them in the community. Please also take solicitation letters to businesses that you frequent and ask for their support. Barb Martiak is again collecting donations from parishioners for the money tree. See Barb if you would like to donate. Carol Devine is compiling a list of cake donations for trivia night. Please see Carol to, to sign up for a cake donation or add your name to the cake donation sign-up sign sheet on the trivia night table. It is helpful if we know ahead of time what type of cakes will be donated. We will again be accepting donations of gift baskets or new items that can be used in gift basket raffles. Raffle items can be given to Lynn Brunette Kelly after church. Deadline for gift basket items is September 30th. The second and final parish meeting before Trivia Night will be held Tuesday, September 18th. If you have not yet volunteered to help on Trivia Night, please see Lynn after church. Thank you all in advance for your efforts. This is our only fundraiser that we have in our community, in our church, and um, please do everything that you can to be a part of it. We welcome this morning Joe and Lisa, Lisa Matve and their cousin Therese from Nevada, right? Nevada, yes. So welcome. It's nice to have you across the road to Arizona, somewhere down there, somewhere in the southwest. It's nice to have you with us today. I hope you enjoyed the divine liturgy. Birthday greetings are extended to today to this week to Bill Dudak, to Protodeacon Gregory Bank, and to Ron Tinkle. Happy birthday, Ron. Sunday school begins next Sunday. We emphasize the importance of timely attendance of the Sunday school classes. Our dedicated teachers are there every Sunday, so should your, be your children. We will have Antieta on this morning for the Feast of the Dormition of the Theotokos, the birth giver of God. As you see, there are rose petals. Uh, we, we put the rose petals to remember that when Thomas, who was not present at her burial, wanted to venerate the body of the Theotokos, he went to the tomb three days afterward, and they found that the tomb was empty. But what they did find was the smell, the fragrant smell of flowers and roses that filled the air. So you're welcome to take some, take a handful home, um, take them all. Uh, if you don't take them, I have to pick them up. Coffee Social this morning is sponsored by Diet Varzna. We are currently accepting $100 donations or more toward the fundraising event for the Camp Nazareth and, and the diocese. Your $100 donation entitles you to a dinner held October 7th at the Sunny Hannah Country Club in Westmont. Please make your donation as soon as possible. October is right around the corner. Much to read in a bulletin, basket party, Mountain Hill Playhouse reservation, and payments are due today. If you would like to go, please make your reservations today with Carol Devine. Back by popular demand, the Cathedral Yard Sale. Inserted into this week's bulletin is a flyer with details about our indoor yard sale. See the D. Tavarzna for details. Deepest sympathies are extended to Carol Devine and the family of John Homiak, who fell, in this, uh, fell asleep in, this, in the Lord this past week. Special, a special cathedral seniors meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, September 12th, being that the second Tuesday is a whole major holy day and a day of strict fasting. We have moved this cathedral seniors meeting to Wednesday, September 12th at 1 p.m. in the Cathedral Auditorium. We will have picnic food. We have a package of hot dogs left over from the church picnic, so we will serve those. They're still good. Hot dogs last for about, I think, a million years. <laughs> Panahita this morning for my father, Bernie Butchak, third year of his falling asleep today, and also for Marianne Yusik Fetterman, Anna Pringle, Lida McCoshock, Departed members of the Cathedral Altar Society, Eileen Marie Soroka, and Mark Andrew Keselek. And we have a special announcement this morning. It is with great joy I read this announcement from our bishop. From the office of the bishop, glory be to Jesus Christ, glory be forever. To the very reverend proto-presbyters, very reverend and reverend fathers, and faithful of our God-protected diocese, today I write 
to share with you, my dear brother, priests and wonderful lay people, youth and adults, the news that the Holy and Sacred Synod of the Ecumenical Patriarch of Constantinople at its monthly meeting on August 29, 2018, voted to elevate your bishop to the rank of Metropolitan. I was stunned and nearly speechless, and still am, when His Eminence Archbishop Dimitrios of the Greek Archdiocese, who serves as the Exarch of the Ecumenical Patriarch here in America, called yesterday afternoon. His All Holiness Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew and the Holy Sacred Synod have honored all of us. I am truly and greatly humbled. Working in his vineyard with much love, Bishop Gregory of Nisa. We congratulate His Grace, Bishop Gregory, and God grant him many years. Ispolaiti Despota. We still refer to him as Your Grace until the formalities of the ceremonies take place, in which then we will refer to him as Your Eminence, Metropolitan Gregory. But until that takes place, we still call him Your Grace, Bishop Gregory. That will happen in the near future, I am sure. It's a great joy. We will see you all at the coffee social this morning. May the blessing of the Lord be upon you through his grace and love for mankind, always, now, and ever, and forever. from the dead, to the prayers of his most pure mother, to the prayers of a holy father among the saints, John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, and through the prayers of the holy prophet Samuel, whom we commemorate this day, and through the prayers of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us, for he is gracious and he loves mankind. Blessed is our God, always, now, and ever, and forever. Amen. Holy God, holy, mighty one, holy, immortal one, have mercy on us. Amen.
Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy. We pray to you, hear us, and have mercy. Oh. Uh-huh. 